Hi, in this video, we'll be taking a look at how I set up the skin shop in Mafia City Rivals. This was the first task I took on when I joined the project. I had a much bigger task on deck, but doing this first was a great way to get a feel for how things were put together. The first thing I had to do was assess what needed to be done. At that time, Kevin had already built a shop front into the station area with a number of skins. A great start that simplified my job by giving a pretty clear direction forward. There were three main things I needed to do to get this skin shop working. First, there needs to be a system to purchase and save the player's inventory of skins. Next, the existing skins, as well as a few more, need to be made into playable characters. And finally, I need to create a system that allows the player to swap between skins. I started with the purchase system. The shop was already lined with these display cases, so I needed something that would activate when the player stood in front of them. I started with a cylinder object that would act as my area trigger. I added a collision detector targeted to the cylinder that activates and deactivates a UI node when the player enters or exits the area. In the UI node, I built buttons for the ability to buy and equip the skin. I also made sure there was a transition for when the panel's visibility is changed. Before I continued building the rest of the logic, I took everything I had so far and made it into a reusable. Now I could set up the rest of the logic I needed in the container and keep things a little more tidy. The container needed two inputs so the instances of the reusable could be configured for each skin. The index of the skin will let each instance know which skin it unlocks or equips. This value is used by the broadcasters that unlock or equip the skin. The other end of that logic will come in the next part. The second input is the price of the skin. This feeds a compare node that checks if the player has enough currency to purchase the skin. There's also some logic to control the look of the UI node depending on if the skin has been purchased already or not. Now, before I could test the UI, I needed to get at least one skin and the spawning system working. I grabbed one of the skins Kevin had created and made a copy of it. I found the player character Yuso had made and checked out what behaviors it had, then added those to the skin, which also needed to be resized to match the size of the default player. Finally, the test skin and the original character model were made into reusables that I can store in a list and send to a spawner. Next, I did something that ended up sending me down a less than ideal path. I needed a way to keep track of whether or not the skin had been purchased. Since I was working at this point with just one skin, I created a number node for this. The number node is fed by a broadcast listener that receives a signal from the purchase UI. Here it's using the skin index as the broadcast signal channel to send the signal to the correct skin. It then sends its state back to the UI so it can update the purchase UI to show that the skin is owned. When I created the rest of the skins, I ended up copying this for each one, creating a bunch of short strings of logic, each with a number node that needed to be saved in player progression. It would have required much less logic nodes to track these values in a list. Speaking of lists, next I created a list and added both the default character and the new skin to it. This list now determines the index of my skins. Default is zero, the first skin is one, and so on. From there, I found the initial player spawn logic that Yuso created. I removed the default character as the object to spawn target and replaced it with some logic that pulls the target from that list. I'll keep track of the equipped skin index in a function, so a function caller will feed the index of the list value inspector, which then calls the skin to be spawned by the spawner. This is all done with reader links, so all I have to do is execute the spawner and it knows which skin to spawn. At this point, after some testing, tweaking, and fixing, I had the basic purchase system working, but it could only spawn the skin at the original spawn point. I wanted the player to be able to equip the skin immediately in the shop, so I had one more step. I found the player health system, as I assumed this would already have a destroyer in it. Turns out it didn't, but I built my skin swapping system here anyway. I could have built this in a different behavior or even created a new one, but in this case, the logic was pretty simple, so I didn't think it needed its own container. 
When an equip skin broadcast signal is received, it pulls the skin from the same list and sends it to a spawner that is targeted to the player. As soon as it spawns the new skin, the old one is destroyed. Once this was all tested and working, it was just a matter of repeating a bunch of steps for each skin. First, making all the skins Kevin had created into reusables with the needed behaviors to be playable characters. Then setting up a purchase station for each skin in the skin shop creating the logic required to keep track of each skin's purchase state, and finally adding all the skins to the list. I also grabbed a few players I'd made for other games to use as some additional skins and added them in. In the player's progress, I'm saving a number node for each skin, as well as a number node that keeps track of the currently equipped skin, so that when the player returns to the game, they'll have the same skin equipped as when they left. And that's how I set up the shop for Mafia City Rivals. In my next videos, we'll be taking a look at how I built the Battle Arena bonus stages. Peace out, hypesters.